My name is Kim Olowekari. I work for European Chemicals Agency and I will share with you um, a presentation on, on uh, uh, animal, animal welfare topic. It is about how to avoid agricultural toxicity testing with certain adaptation that we have recently developed in ECA. So the presentation concerns about three R approaches to agricultural toxicity testing. Before we go to the value of agricultural toxicity testing, I would just like to, to uh, clarify and, and share with you ECA's um, approach, uh, ECA's perspective to, to animal testing. ECA is, is clearly and obviously committed to, to use non-animal approaches whenever that is possible. And uh, from our point of view, uh, non-animal approaches are are possible when they are scientifically valid and when they when they meet the regulatory requirements. One important thing with with uh, with any adaptation is that the data always needs to be good enough for classification and labeling. Now, um, for any toxicologist, um, there are some pros and some cons with acute oral toxicity test. The first good thing about it is that it's usually the first measure of toxicity and, and it may guide um, the reticent to choose correct dosing for the 28-day uh, study. Uh, it is also sometimes occasionally useful when a short-term denial has to be derived. The cons with, the, with acute oral toxicity testing is that it very seldom is the, actually the driver of the risk assessment and risk management. Usually the DNL that is used under REITs is derived from a subacute oral toxicity study or subchronic study or from some reprodu uh, reproductive toxicity studies. And in that regard, the value of acute toxicity test is, uh, uh, is limited. Furthermore, in these other studies, repeated dose toxicity studies, several uh, parameters and observations are obtained, like histopathology, clinical chemistry, and hematology, and these are not addressed in the acute oral toxicity uh, study. Now let's first check what is actually required under REITs. Um, uh, Subacute to oral toxicity test is required whenever uh, the tonnage is above 10 tons per year, um, uh, whereas acute oral toxicity test is required for for all the substances that are that are registered. So it is, it means that uh, when the tonnage is above one ton per year, acute oral tox test or similar data um, is required. With subacute oral toxicity test, uh, one result of that is a, is an OIL value, no observed adverse effect level value, which is used for, for setting the DNL. So for risk assessment, this study is quite important. And usually if NOAL, NOAL is above 1000 mix per kilogram of, of body weight of the animal, then no higher dosing and no further um, uh, studies would be needed for that endpoint. Um, in the acute oral toxicity test, there is a similar limit, which is a classification limit in this case. So whenever the LD50 is above 2,000 mg per, ki per kilogram, no higher doses uh, are, are needed. And the classification in this case, no classification can be based on that result. Now, uh, what we did in ECA was that we have run an analysis in our Euclid database that, that includes all the registration information, and, uh, and we wanted to check this hypothesis. The hypothesis is that when acute oral toxicity test, uh, that acute oral tox test can be waived if sub subacute test indicates low toxicity. And, uh, and, and if this is put to the, to the dosage that is used for the test, it could be, could be translated as a hypothesis uh, which suggests if you give one gram of a substance every day for 28 days, this is a subacute uh, sub toxicity test, to rats and there's no effect, then we assume that there will be no effect also if you give to the rats two grams of the same substance in one day. And uh, we 
we took our um, our registration data and and with certain number of of, of uh, cases we we checked whether this hypothesis is true or not and because we actually were able to confirm the hypothesis uh, we are able to uh, to advise the registrant to examine whether they can use this uh, uh, this finding in order not to do acute oral toxicity test but but indeed uh, instead uh, uh, rely on the on the result of the subacute toxicity test Uh, under REITS, um, weight of evidence approach means, um, after all, that one data point is not uh, good enough, is not sufficient, and, and therefore um, the registrant needs to have um, more than, than only the subacute toxicity study. But I will come, to, come back to that a bit later. The aim is uh, the adaptation of acute oral toxicity study, and this can be done whenever low toxicity has been found in the subacute uh, uh, oral toxicity study and this uh, outcome this result of the of the sorry can I go back here so the study that we get from the sub, uh, subacute uh, oral toxicity study is is suitable for classification and and no classification for acute oral toxicity is required with this adaptation and it also helps the registrant to fulfill their legal obligation to, to do animal testing only as a last resort. What we did was we took all the registration uh, database cases uh, and we took a data set where all the studies are, are of good quality. Uh, so the registrant has indicated that the quality of the study is either one or two, which is good enough for us. Uh, and we excluded all read crosses, uh, explicit or hidden read crosses, because uh, in those cases we actually uh, have no certainty on, on what the, the real level, toxicity level for those substances is. And we have uh, included those OECD and EU test guidelines that are that are acceptable uh, for these two endpoints, acute and su subacute uh, toxicity. The further limitation was that we only dealt with oral administration, oral studies, because inhalation and dermal studies uh, differ in dosing and also in in regard of the findings. Now here are the results. Uh, overall, there were there were four hundred. There were four hundred four hundred seventeen cases that we could that we could examine, and as you can see here, in in all in most of the cases there are only nine exemptions from from this. In almost all the cases where uh, the NOAL from this subacute study was was above thousand. Also, low toxicity was seen in the in the acute oral toxicity study, which means that the LD50 was was two thousand. So our hypothesis that acute oral toxicity can be predicted from the result of the of the subacute oral toxicity test was actually found correct. We had nine ex exemptions from this rule, from this, um, uh, from this waiver. And just to give you a couple of, ex of examples of how these nine uh, outliers were, in some of them, um, uh, the test animal was some, some other than, than rat. In some cases, hamster, for example, was studied. And in certain cases, the test substance actually was something different. The, it was not given as a read across, but, but for example, it could have been a salt or hydroxide of the resistant substance that was tested. So we had to exclude from the data set most of these nine cases. And actually, that means that the correlation or the predictive power of this, of this adaptation um, is, is higher than, even higher than, than shown with these figures. As I said, weight of evidence approach under each means that the registrant uh, needs to have more than one data point in order to suggest uh, weight of evidence. 
weight of evidence uh, means in the legal sense that that there is uh, there is two or more data that when taken together can be used to uh, either to confer confirm certain toxicity or claim that that the substance does not have a, a specific type of toxicity uh, and reach reticent relatively often they rely on weight of evidence and and the adaptation that we are suggesting here is one acceptable way of of uh, formulating a weight of evidence now in addition to the subacute toxicity study that we have been speaking now in addition to that the reticent would have uh, several choices they can they can use what we call the extended dose range finder study, and I will explain that more closely, or they can use an in vitro test that is also a re relatively good predictor of the low toxicity. They can run QSAR models, or they can suggest that because the substance has a very low bioavailability, uh, uh, this FISCAM property adds to the weight of evidence um, together with the subacute toxicity study. So the reticent can take one or more of these together with the subacute toxicity study and formulate their, their way to evidence in order to avoid doing an unnecessary study, acute oral toxicity study. So just a few words then on the dose, dose range finder. They are usually done um, before the 28-day study, the subacute uh, study, in order to um, to have a first idea on on the level of toxicity that is expected, and also uh, they are they are made in order to set the dosing right. So if the substance is very very toxic, then of course the maximum dose has to be uh, has to be much lower than in ta than thousand mg per kg in some cases. So it's basically a first advice on the on the test house on how to how to run the 28 day study actually. Duration of the dose range finder usually is 14 days and and a small group of animals is used in order to 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 observe any effects. We also considered whether whether another kind of dose range finder uh, can be can be proposed, but uh, but we didn't find find that very useful. So in conclusion, uh, a dose range finding study can can tell us uh, something that comes very close to the to the acute uh, oral toxicity study, provided that uh, that the recordings of the of the clinical clinical observations that is observation of any toxic effects is carefully done. If that recording is fine, uh, we get relatively uh, useful information from the dose range finder and if reads reticent uh, builds a weight of evidence that includes the dose range finder and uh, the master study the 28 day study they have a good chance to 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 cover the information required for acutoral talks The, the other possible element, or the third possible element of the weight of evidence is an in vitro study that has recently been, um, been validated. And what was found in the ECMAN validation study was that in case of low-tox substances, the predictivity um, uh, from, from this in vitro study was, uh, was relatively high. This is a very simple uh, cytotoxicity method that actually uh, uh, shows with the color indication of viability of the cells. So there's a neutral red uh, um, uh, pigment or, or dye stuff that escapes from the cells whenever the cells are, are no longer viable. And, and you can see here um, an example of, of a test plate where, where uh, the uh, where the where beginning of, uh, of, of the study, or actually depending on the concentration, you can see that the cells are viable and, uh, and the dye stuff is retained in the cells. And here, uh, the first signs of, of cell, cell toxicity, cytotoxicity, start to appear. Um, the, the cons or the downside of this test is that it's not um, reliably predicting the, the level of toxicity. What it can be used for is to is for an indication of low toxicity only. 
Then some uh, final conclusions. So what we found in our analysis was that that um, it's probably is possible that for about 5,000 uh, substances, the acute oral uh, toxicity test can be waived by using this weight of evidence. So we believe that that this exercise is, is worthwhile and some registrant uh, will be able to to avoid unnecessary testing and also uh, we are promoting the, the animal welfare with this adaptation possibility. There are some limitations, however, uh, if uh, the subacute uh, toxicity study indicates that the NOAL is below 1000 mg per kg, then the substance actually has some form of toxicity and then the adaptation cannot be used because there is no prediction of, of the correct toxicity classification. This adaptation basically only applies to the, to the low toxicity substances. Uh, also, if, if no subacute oral toxicity study, study is available, which also can refer to the lowest registration, um, registration tonnage under reach, then this adaptation cannot be applied because subacute oral toxicity is the, is the necessary element of it. Furthermore, if there is a country, and there are some EU countries even, who, which apply a different kind of, of acute tox toxicity classification, then this adaptation would not work because in these countries actually uh, also LD50s that are between 2,000 and 5,000 need, need to be correctly identified. In the end, um, we have been able to, to publish our results, and here is a link to uh, to the Aldex publication, which, uh, with, which explains in more detail what we have found in our database analysis and how the weight of evidence uh, case has to be built. Thank you for your interest and thank you for your time.